Dear all, in this movie I show another way to bring a design circuit to a PCB board. To do this I use a 3D printer, a copper LED board covered with photosensitive dry film and a UV LED. The head containing the UV LED moves over the film. The UV LED switches on where the film needs to be exposed. All the time the film is exposed or not, the head remains on the film. So there is no vertical movement of the head. These pictures were taken after the exposed film was developed. The pictures of the tracks are 0.5 mm, the tracks width is 0.3 mm and the space between the tracks is 0.2 mm. After the introduction I will show you how the system is built. I do this by disassembling the system. The parts are the screen with the panel through which the UV light comes. The electronics part. The printed circuit board transforms the supplied fan voltage of 24 volts into a current of 550 milliamp through the UV LED. And then the table on which an aluminum strip with LED and screen is attached. The table mounted clamps for the axles. The bearings fixed on the mounting plate. The magnet to attach the hole to the 3D printer head. And an overview of all parts. In this chapter I show how the screen with pinhole has been made. I start with a 3D printer made mold. The sharp parts of the mold have been removed to prevent cracking of the foil. I take a piece of 5 times 5 cm of aluminum foil. Cut it to half a cm from the center. Cover the mold with the foil and press the shape. Rip from the outside to the center. Use a cotton swab to smooth out the last bumps. Sharp parts in the mold or insufficient amount of foil rubbed from the outside to the center gives cracks. Because this requires some practice, cut a number of foil pieces beforehand. Not necessary, but if you don't have a 0.3 mm drill, break a piece of a needle and put it in the center of the foil covered mold. Mix a two part epoxy resin and fill the mold. I used an already filled glue. But a transparent glue can be filled with graphite from a pencil, eyeshadow or with toner from a laser printer. Let the glue harden out. This may take several days. Drill the necessary holes through the mold. Remove the mold and work the half screen with various tools to the desired result. A long pinhole, the upper drawing, lets less line shine on the film than the stepped pinhole shape in the lower drawing. If you don't have used a filler for that glue, you can glue a piece of foil over the pinhole area. A repair tape foil is about 10 times thicker than household foil, so that's done the best to use. But remove the glue layer of the tape before. 
and aluminum strip is used to mount the screen with the UV LED. Mix some epoxy glue, smear it on the aluminum strip and place a piece of PCB for soldering the leads of the LED. Also put glue on the sides. This prevents a short circuit due to the non-insulated connection wires of the LED. Drill the mounting holes for the screen with the LED. Tap 2.5mm screw holes or use screws with a nut. Solder wires to the LED and screw the LED with screen onto the aluminum strip. Bend the wires to the back and solder them to the PCB. This is a look at two mounted screens. One mounting is made on a curved aluminum strip and the other on a piece of aluminum profile. The electronics for controlling the LED are provided by a bug converter. The input of the bug converter will be controlled by the fan voltage that can be switched on and off via the software. The LED has a such a voltage current characteristic that the current can increase sharply with a small voltage variation. It is therefore better to send a fixed current through the LED. The current is determined by the voltage on FB and the resistance value of RM. When measuring the output voltage, it turned out to be unstable. There were strong fluctuations. By adding a capacitor to the circuit, it gave the expected result. For those interested, this page may provide more clarity. Important! Test the circuit with an external power supply before connecting it to the fan terminal. This is the result of the circuit. The transfer of the 24 volt fan voltage to a current of 555 mA through the LED. This is the LED I used. The dimensions of the PCB with the control electronics. This photo is of the printer head fan. I desoldered the wires from these and provided them with new wires. Both ends are fitted with a connector so that the electronics can be connected instead of the fan. With all the parts that fit together, it's important that the bubbles are eliminated. This prevents the shafts becoming twisted and just being able to move smoothly or not. When mounting, the soldering iron is helpful to make the bearings fit. In the beginning, the hole can slide roughly. Turn the screws a little looser and move again. However, the system will have to set. This can cost some days. Move it a number of times every day. At the end, it will slide well. I used Inkscape to create an example layout. Extended software is needed to generate G-code for the plotter. Some extra lines of code are added to the extended software. Open Inkscape and design a layout. Save the data as 3-axis G-code plotter. The window G-code plot appears. Take the tab General Settings. Enter the correct coordinates. And special lift set height 0 mm. Otherwise the set direction moves with each light change of the LED. And the tab Drawing Settings for the areas to be filled in. Click OK to generate the G-code. Before plotting, make sure the pinhole is free of dust. Vacuum or blow it clean. Now the plotter head can be placed and the plotting of the layout can start.
The current plot ahead uses a magnet to fix the system. The previous verse is equipped with a clamping system where four screw holes had to be made in the 3D printer head. This works just as well as the version with the magnet. In order to get to the result I have now achieved, I have tried many parts. At the top right, purchase bearings are both ball and slide bearings, but these had too much space between the shaft and the bearing, some up to 200 micrometers. In the top center are several test molds to make the screen with the pinhole. In the bottom row, three fully functioning systems, surrounded by various bearings that are used in the three versions. It is recommended to always fit the PCB in the same place on the printer table. For this I use a holder where the PCB is placed. We start by aligning the PCB holder. A camera is mounted next to the screen with the pinhole. The alignment procedure. Use the VLC program to display the image from the camera. In this program you can add text. Place in the center minus minus plus minus minus, from now called the camera center. This is then used for alignment. To control the printer I use the program Pontoface and then initialize the printer. Then move the Z direction 30mm up or more if necessary. Use the camera to find the PCB stop line in the X direction by a Pontoface to move the print head. Start on the left with the camera center on the edge of the holder and then manipulate to the right. Once there you will see the deviation between the print head and the holder. Correct this deviation with the screw on the front of the holder. Replace the holder and check the result. Realign if necessary. Determining the coordinates of the PCB space within the holder. Initialize the printer if not already done. Move up 30mm with the Z direction. Then move the camera to the alignment feature of the PCB holder. Use the camera center to set the center. Note the coordinates. Make a cost line feature with Inkscape and generate a G-code file that can be used to plot the cost line feature on the photosensitive copper clad. The plotting the coordinates of the cross are determined using the camera and note the coordinates. Place the cross lines coordinates from Inkscape, the left picture, and the coordinates measured by the camera, the right picture, of each other, the picture below. From this, the necessary offset coordinates for Inkscape can be calculated. Then design an alignment figure in the top layer. Copy and mirror it to another layer or another file, which then becomes the bottom layer. Then generate G-code files from both of this, each with their own offset. Plot the top layer. Flip the PCB to the other side and plot the bottom layer. Drill a hole in the center of the alignment feature and see if the hole has ended up in the right place of the bottom. To see it accurately, place the PCB back in the holder on the printer. Check the top layer and the bottom layer with the camera. If there is a deviation in the X direction, correct it with the offset when the G-code is created. And deviation in the Y direction, check the horizontal alignment. <laughs> 